Hi guys, today I'm going to try to answer the question Is it worth to upgrade a mid-2010 MacBook Pro 13-inch laptop? I got this laptop from my work colleague and she was asking me to clean it up and to make it work faster by changing new hard drive and battery. Here you can see the SuperDrive DVD-ROM and here are all the good old ports. Starting from the left side, there is a MagSafe 1 port, Ethernet port, Firewire 800 port, Mini Display port, two USB 2.0 ports, an SD card slot, and a 3.5 mm headphone jack. And here we have the remaining battery power indicator button with lights that show how much juice it has. A great old feature. Now let's open up the lid. Here you can see my face. This is the old clicking trackpad. and the great scissor switch keyboard. As you can see, this is the United States keyboard layout because of the enter-return key size. The power button is placed inside aluminum housing. And there is the CD-DVD eject button for the DVD super drive here. Let's boot up this old machine. This Max software hasn't been updated for a very long time. Actually, since the year it has been purchased, 2010. It has the Mac OS X 10.6.8 Snow Leopard latest update on it. It has 2.4 GHz Core 2 Duo processor and 4 GB of 1067 MHz DDR3 RAM. The Mac OS X system has been damaged and therefore many applications are not working or opening anymore. This is where we swap the old faulty hard drive to a significantly faster SSD. This is a Western Digital 480GB SSD. The previous hard drive was a 250GB HDD. Let's open the Western Digital SSD package. And of course, my beloved glowing Apple logo is here too. Now it's time to open up the MacBook Pro. I have my tools as always. So, all the screws are removed and we can open the back cover. To continue, we will need some specific screwdrivers. There are two screws for the battery, but before you remove anything, you need to unplug the main battery wire. You can see it at the right side from the green RAM memory. Now we can remove the battery. To remove the old hard drive, there is a plastic element with two screws. Removing both of them will release the hard drive. 
After that, carefully remove the HDD wire. Then there are two screws you need to remove from both sides, four altogether. You need to screw all four of them into the new SSD in the same spots. When it's done, just place the wire back and align the new SSD back inside. After the SSD is in, just put the plastic part on and screw both screws in, to secure it from movement. Now we need to replace the battery with a new OEM type for this exact mid-2010 model. I here have a MacBook Pro 7.1 model with a 2.4 GHz processor, so the battery should fit. The best part here is that the package contains both screwdrivers needed to open the back cover and to screw the battery in. As I mentioned, the battery has only two screws. One is here, and the second one goes here. And at the end, don't forget to plug in the battery power cable in place. I only didn't change the RAM memory. I let it stay 2 plus 2 GB and see if the Mac works good enough. Now we can close the back cover. So now all the screws are in and we can open the lid and see how fast it will boot up. Not that fast, but significantly faster than with the old hard drive. So, the installation progress from Snow Leopard to this Mac OS High Sierra wasn't that easy. I probably make another video with all the steps you need to make to get here. So, here you can see, it runs the latest supported Mac OS High Sierra 10.13.6 you can see the specs, the upgraded SSD, RAM memory, let's open some freshly installed apps. And sorry guys for the camera focus. So. Is it worth upgrading that old of a laptop that this 2010 MacBook Pro 13-inch is? I would say 
It actually still is if you are not planning to work with photo or video intensive tasks. Using this machine with 4 gigabytes actually feels very good and smooth. You can scroll fast through Safari browser and it can run any app like Charm. Just don't install Google Chrome if you are planning to use only 4 gigabytes of RAM, because it eats up RAM like crazy. Other than that, now this Mac boots up and opens apps fast. Of course, the screen has a low resolution and the speakers are not that good, but you can live with that any day if you need to work with documents, internet, watch movies and listen to music. And so, that will wrap up this video. I hope it will help you to decide if you want to restore your good old MacBook that has been collecting dust for many years. Subscribe for more videos like this one, and I see you all in the next episode of Take You Through.